This is a 100 series Toyota Land Cruiser, the USA model. It's very capable, very well made, and everybody loves it, and it's a real Land Cruiser. But see, other parts of the world, they actually didn't take this as a real Land Cruiser. They took a lot of different models that we never got in the US, and specifically where I come from. This is what we call a Land Cruiser. This is an FJ75 GCC. It is as Land Cruiser as they come. In today's video, we're gonna do a proper tour of this thing, which really makes my heart smile every time I look at it. Let's get started. So this is a 1993 FJ75 GCC. GCC is the Gulf countries. This particular one actually was imported from Saudi Arabia. What a beautiful sight and something. So we, I am from Iraq, I'm not from Saudi Arabia, but we still had these and they were, yeah, they were real land cruisers. Let's start with the front. So the, the closest resemblance to this is a 70 series, but this one is actually a 75. It is extremely basic, and all this is aftermarket. This is additions, this doesn't have anything. It's actually a very basic car. And you look at the grill here, it's just have the lights. These are not even the original lights. Got a Toyota logo right here. Things are very, very basic. If memory serves right, I don't even think this is actually original to this car. This might have been an accessory that was added to it. It is just, a beautiful thing. Look at this turn signal that is completely baked by the uh, sun over there in Saudi Arabia. They didn't even have a space to put the turn signal. They had to put this protrusion to do it. And of course, the, uh, yeah, the fenders. So this is the cool thing about these. They looked more like the civilian model, not like the previous ones where they had the full on fender and they kind of looked too much. This was like the softer one. And when I say softer, there's nothing soft about these. They are every bit as much as the Line Cruiser. So you look at the hood here, for example, you can open this hood and lay it across and that's the easiest way to work on them. And then we look at the finer details. So the wipers, they have the hinge in a very strange position because this glass is almost straight. And then the antenna over here, it's a very cool thing. And then the uh, glass has a hinge. Now, this is a little bit more cumbersome to disconnect and pull, pull the glass up, but it's possible and not something simple. Not like, for example, a Jeep. You notice the gutters, this has, of course, gutter system to drain the water should we need it. And then this particular graphic, I, I don't recall other parts of the world that love these graphics as much as the Middle East do, but we always have some kind of interesting graphic. That was pretty cool. And of course, four wheel drive. You have to write very large. So in case you don't think this is four wheel drive, we remind you again. And then the old font of the Land Cruiser, 4.5, because this is a 4.5. Let's finish our tour on the outside. We'll look at the inside and we'll look at what's under the hood. Then we have a little vent here for, you know, this is a basic car, basic car. Then we come to the bed. I don't recall, so I, I was not here even, you know, the, these, the real line cruisers were in the US at least long time ago. But where I come from, this was the norm. You have these hooks. So you can hook stuff in the bed. They were never on the inside. They were always on the outside. If you are old enough, and you're into the older Land Cruisers. Did the US model actually have this? Because this looks like a giant liability in an accident. Then we have the side step here. So you can step into the bed. Because again, where I come from, this is not a place to haul things. It's a place to haul people as well. So something about the Middle East trucks. Now, I don't want to disturb a lot of the owners items here, but there is this metal bar that sits behind the uh, back glass here. They always had it, and I've never seen a US car that actually has this. So I wonder if that's something only in the Middle East available. You're free to use the comments for your imaginations why that is there. And just look at how basic things are. There's actually nothing. There's just one little line goes across, and that's it because this is, again, different time. And you notice that the mud flap, we'll look at it a little bit at the bottom, is like a built into the body, and then there's a little extension, just, just in case. 
Let me look at the back. I just, just look at this. Have you ever seen a car? I was gonna peel, cover it up a little bit. Have you ever seen a car this basic, but this much loved? Just look at this. <laughs> it is as basic as they come. And that's all you need. You don't really need a uh, fancy look, like even the series that we got in the US. So Toyota, large lettering, and it's not even raised or anything. This is actually a sticker, by the way. And then four wheel drive. Of course, we have to remind you one more time that this is four wheel drive. And then the tail lights, exposed bolts, nothing, nothing out of the world. This is actually the original bumper to this. And then this, uh, I haven't seen this in so long, the hitch. 24 valve LX, I remember those trims, I think it was an LX, there was a GX and a GXR, or something, VXR I think, not GXR. Don't quote me, it's been a minute. But I love how this bed comes up. It's a two step operation. This is when, uh, you know, there was no convenience. Everything was like that. You notice there's no covering here, nothing. It's just a bed and that's it. This brings a lot of memories for me, folks. I don't recall the last time I saw a U.S. truck that has two, maybe the very old ones. Don't quote me on that in case that is the case, but not in the 90s. Let's put it this way. And then here you got the access to the spare tire. We'll look at that in a little bit from underneath because it's actually very cool what they did here. Spare tire. And then I love this. This is a very old sticker, but actually what it says in Arabic is, Toyota oil. I don't know why we need to say that, but hey, it's kind of talking to me. It says Toyota oil on it. I always tell you guys to use it all the time. It's Now this is a little modified. The wheels are not original. It's lifted actually. We'll look underneath it in a little bit, but what a beautiful sight to look at. This is actually my favorite color. So these, I don't recall actually, in the I've only seen them in two colors in the Middle East. Possibly there are other colors. They're always either white or this color. I guess when you live in a desert, these are the two colors you want. For example, you would never buy a black car if you live where I come from. It's a bad idea. First, it'll always be dirty. Second, it's very hot. So, yeah. Let's look at the interior or they're off, lack off. Now, the owner of this car did cover everything up. This was the standard because at this point, you want to preserve these cars. Let me go on the other side. We'll talk about a few things. And we need to unlock the door. How about that? Of course, there's no central lock. There's nothing. Everything is manual here. Now, this is just a uh, breath of fresh air. There's actually nothing. You see all this covering. This was very common to protect them from heat and whatnot, but this car actually has no carpet. You see this? This is not the actual carpet. This is stuff just to protect it. This had a little rubber mat, which is built in. And if you look at the edge of the seat right here, you can actually see the color of the body because there's nothing. That's how they are. You look behind the seats here, color of the body, same thing. Look at the headliner. This was like the upgraded model with this little thing here but the rest is just body color and same thing here that's just how they were I mean you these were as basic as they come folks and we use them for everything ambulance you name it in those days they were the the car of use the steering wheel is not original on this the owner does have the original steering wheel he was just experimenting with a little bit different look without affecting the car. Look at these uh, extremely basic HVAC controls. That is the, the first time this car had this knob in this position is when it came here because it has spent its entire life in this position because we do not dare do this where I come from. Maybe in surprise it actually has heater. Usually some of these cars didn't. And speaking of that, uh, this does not have a defrost defroster on the glass, of course. I mean, why would you need a defroster where this comes from? This is a sliding glass. 
probably hasn't been open in a very long time, so I'm not gonna push it, but they do slide, actually both glasses slide. And then the other thing is the, do uh, you remember these? Okay, this particular one, that's, there we go. I feel like this hasn't been open in a very long time. So, this is what we used to say where I come from. If it's hot, you turn on the AC in the car. If it's extremely hot, you shut off the AC and you turn these on. That'll bring you more air than the AC will because it gets so hot over there, you, the AC won't work. Or when your AC breaks, this is actually very cool. I, was, I really wish cars still have this today, but for safety regulations and whatnot, I've seen this in so long. It's, it's just very cool to see it. It's a very basic concept. You know, this is all it is is a glass that pivots, but it works. But you notice the very large emphasis on the middle section right here. You got the altimeter and the thermometer. It's just huge and it's central in the car because that's the most important thing. Very basic radio, uh, an entire thing for the clock. And then these rotary HVAC vents. It's such a beautiful, it, it's, it's actually, when I say this is a beautiful interior, I mean, there's nothing. You can literally see the ducts underneath the, the, the bowler motor is right here things are just exposed like that but that's the beauty of it is how simple it is because all the stuff we have in modern cars and all the gizmos and the giant screen and all that you know there was a time where we didn't have that and we were just perfectly fine so it, it is just goes back to that of course it's a manual transmission this is this has a manual transfer case not buttons this is as basic as they come this is the time where toyota gained their reputation of reliability because they built cars like this and they really did them well of course it has a grab handle here i wish this was not covered so you can see everything but i understand why the owner covers it because these things are getting up in value especially on this side of the pond so what a beautiful interior but Aside from the interior, let's go look at the under the hood. Let's take a look at what we have underneath here. Look familiar? This is actually a very familiar engine for most. This is a 1FZ. But normally the 1FZ in this area, in the US, it had six injectors and it was very high tech. Well, this one is a GCC car. Don't quote me on this, but I'm trying to remember, remember in a little bit of research I did, this was actually a specific requirement by the GCC to have carburetors because direct injection at that time was very complicated, very, and they just didn't want it. Their emission regulation in, in the GCC countries didn't require it. So very nice carburetor. A very high-tech carburetor with an auto choke and just basically space age stuff at the time this is what made Japanese cars start on cold weather although there was no cold weather where this comes from but it's a massive engine and working on these is a pleasure except with these modifications they make things a little bit more difficult but everything is wide open look how much space you have on that side being that this engine is massive to me at least to me this feels like it has more space than an 80 series because you're closer to the engine and in the front the radiator is actually much smaller than the 80 series but it's huge this is a four row radiator because of course where this this car lives it's in the middle east very hot and that's why you have a massive radiator it's not really wide because this is narrower so if you look at the whole engine bay it's actually a lot narrower than like an 80 series but this engine just sits here and it looks like it belongs of course this has a distributor very old school stuff power steering but everything underneath here there are some modifications to this but for the lights and whatnot but everything with the engine itself it's all 100% original. There's nothing changed here. I mean, I'm looking at the clamps, I'm looking at everything. Nobody's been here. This is how well this car is made. And, and these things just run and run and run. And I, I remember seeing them, the abilities to just, you rarely see these break. And that's why, because they're basic. It doesn't even have fuel injection. You just have a carburetor, very high tech one, but still they, they don't have many issues. What a beautiful, 
beautiful car, folks. And one, one more thing I want to bring to your attention, maybe two. I mean, we can't talk enough about this car. This, there's a very mysterious round here. It looks like somebody either put a cup or something for a long period of time and it kind of etched into the paint. And where I come from, and this is, we call this very rusty. Of course, this is just surface rust, but it's interesting. But what I want to tell you is this mirror, look at the shape of this mirror. We just did a video on the GX here, the new GX. Does that look exactly the same? Hmm, are they taking cue from the FJ75 or the Land Cruisers of the past? Because to me, this looks exactly like the one from the new GX. Folks, before we wrap up this video, let's put this car on the lift. Let's check out underneath it because there's even more stuff underneath it that are surprising. Let's take a look underneath the 70 series. Oh, this is so interesting. I love this thing. Let's take a look at the front here. Yeah, there's not, I don't think there has been another, maybe if you go back way old, but not in the 90s. I know this, is, this is the time of the 80 series in the US and they don't have leaf springs. They have a torsion bar. Leaf springs in the front, it's little cute leaf springs. But notice something, this is why these things were like little tanks. Look how many leaves there are. I mean, we just looked at the new Tacoma, it just has very little leaf springs. Look at this one, how many hangers it has. It's just a beautiful thing. Now, of course, this has a front proper differential, the entire thing, not axles, not like CV axles and whatnot. Similar to the 80 series, not exactly the same, but equally, we have the, uh, yeah, the hubs. This one actually has a very small axle seal leak. It's not huge, but it's getting there and something we got to start finding parts for it because they all have to come from the Middle East. Same thing on the other side. Very common on, uh, not really common. I mean, this thing is 1993. These are probably original because uh, because of the kilometers that it has, not miles. But then we have another relic here. It you haven't seen in a while if you look at modern cars. Steering gear, of course, because uh, this is this is proper. Now these are not the original wheels, of course. We don't have any play whatsoever. I mean, this thing is practically new. There's absolutely no play or anything. Now the suspension, this is lifted a little bit. The suspension is aftermarket. I'm not even familiar what brand that is, but it is pretty cool. But now let's look at the past the uh, front and then we can't lift this very high because it has stuff on top of it and it hits the lift. But here's the engine. It's a massive engine. I mean, the engine starts from here, it goes all the way to here. Yes, it's an inline six, so it'll be tall, but this is like extra tall. Few seepages, of course, this is an older car. You're gonna have that, that's pretty standard. But I love that the, watch this, the vent goes all the way up there, not just a little vent, because of course, this is the ultimate off-roading truck. Now look at the front caliper here, it's very fam familiar caliper. You're gonna have to see this probably in Forerunner, similar caliper, four piston caliper. Brakes are getting a little bit close. These are actually original brakes to this car, which is very interesting that they're still around here. And then there's something about the exhaust. So this is similar to the 80 series. The exhaust actually comes between the body and the frame. It kind of wraps around and then it goes over again. It actually goes over to the other side. It's a very weird setup how they did this. And it has many of these mufflers and resonators. There's one here. As we go down, you'll see more. Very skinny, tiny frame. That's the cool thing about this. But you know what, what is the coolest thing about this frame? If you come around, I was able to show them this. This is a fully box frame. It is not technically, this is a truck, a pickup, but it actually has a fully box frame. Usually that is not the case in these days at least. And it has this big metal shield where the transfer case is. Speaking of, Transmission transfer case, we do have a little seepage here from the seal in between, nothing out of this world. It's a very small seepage. Again, this is an older car, but I love how they put this big heavy shield right here just to protect it. Now, as we move back, you do have the fuel tank, which is kind of an odd fuel tank. Let's look at this. It's, of course, a steel fuel tank and with a drain plug. 
but the fuel tank is like kind of bigger here and then it gets skinny and it goes that way just to give it kind of a bigger fuel tank pretty interesting look to it and then of course the rear end very familiar we all know that with a proportioning valve this is the thing of, of Toyota in these days this is of course rear drums as well rear drum brakes with a very tiny axle seal leak if you come and look at it all the way down here you'll see it a little wet right there it's hard, potentially hard to show but it is a small axle seal leak same thing on this side this side is actually a little bit more not too bad here's again stuff from age typical but leaf springs in the back i mean look how many leaves there are here it's pretty interesting it's just it's the simplicity of this car is what makes it great you notice how the exhaust wraps around somewhere and then goes over the frame and then comes back into this big muffler and then into the last muffler and i just by looking at these i don't think these are original yes these are not original do you see the difference it's immediate how how it looks just the look of this and just the, how this is all corroded this uh, this is not an original muffler to this i wonder why it was replaced because if we go back and look at this one this is an original one it says toyota on it this looks completely different than that one and this is much older i don't know how old this one is but let you look at this Jose bring the camera or let's just look at this beautiful shot so this doesn't have the spare tire on it and just wide open there's no canister there's none of that stuff it's just a beautiful thing and I love this this cross support here there's actually one in the front as well very cool how this is and you notice here you have a place for the spare tire and you actually see that at the bottom here. They actually put an entire tube here for you to get straight to lower the spare tire. It's the little stuff. You see, these were the times where little stuff made a huge impact. The mud flaps. They just says Land Cruiser. Of course it does, and it has three bolts. And even if you don't put this, you still have a built-in mud flap because these cars were meant for desert driving. So you're going to need that. And then other interesting things here is where that actually this is a better shot the exhaust where it wraps around and goes over the frame very strange exhaust but there's this step you notice the step is not part of the frame it's actually part of the body and it's this strong very interesting interesting truck i really this really brings a lot of memories for for me folks i remember these and they were just indestructible you just drive them drive them drive them and they leak oil everywhere they're very common for that but you just keep driving. That's how they are. They, they never strand you. And that was the beauty of these. And that is the FJ75. Folks, this brings so much memories to me. I love looking at this. I love working on this. And just in case you are curious, what is this doing in the shop? So the owner basically have the FJ75 issues. Let's say this. Is this car ever going to break down? Or is there anything that's coming up that I need to know about and the answer is not much you're gonna have to do the front hubs seals and whatnot the axle seals and the rear axle seals we're probably gonna need to do those soon but other than that thing runs great no issues not anything else whatsoever it drives great they are extremely slow and heavy and that's how they are but other than that thing runs great there's really not much that's gonna go wrong with this now or anytime soon and that's the beauty of these. They were really specifically made to withstand really hot climate. And I'm actually surprised that we started this in cold weather. It started right up like this is not really meant for that. But seeing one of these in the U.S. though, it has brought a lot of memories for me. And it's an absolute pleasure to work on this car. Huge shout out to the owner for their privacy. They asked not to mention their name. But huge shout out to the owner who allowed us to film this video and actually work on this car. It's been an absolute pleasure. Folks, now you know what the FJ75 GCC is. It's a beautiful truck. It's very basic. It comes from an era where Toyota were really at the top of their game when it comes to build quality and just focused on what the truck 
purpose is. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.